Rhapsody in Blue with the Colombian jazz band played by I always think it's good to start a Ron Todd lecture with some of the music that Grandad liked. And if you're interested to see what kind of music Ron Todd liked, then check out Desert Island Discs from what feels like a million years ago. But you can actually hear my granddad and my great nan playing the piano. Thank you very much, everybody, for being here tonight. It's really fantastic to see so many awesome people. And even though I'd love to see you all in the real world, how fantastic that even in COVID times, we get to spend some time together, seated probably in our pajamas, yeah, with our top half looking sp splendid and spectacular, but looking relaxing. It's pretty cool. So my name is Bianca Todd and I am the founder of the Ron Todd Foundation and I'm Ron's granddaughter. And the foundation has been going for 10 years and six, four years as a charity. And today it would have been Ron Todd's 94th birthday. So I shall raise a glass and say happy birthday, but there's a better way of doing it. And the better way is solidarity with my brothers and sisters here this evening. We've got two really great speakers. Some organizations like to get general secretaries and that's really fantastic. I like that. However, granddad was all about grassroots because he understood but unless you empower ordinary people, there can't be any change in society. A better world is only possible when we upskill and we empower. That's how we mobilize. So we're really lucky this evening that we've brought together two awesome, well, I think they're awesome. I know that you're going to think they're awesome after you've heard them, people, uh, who are going to share some words and some of their thoughts about what's been going on over the last year. So I'd like to introduce you first to the delightfully talented Mr. Tyler Hinkinson, who's going to share some spoken words. Um, and he's a pretty spectacularly talented young man. So welcome, Tyler. Hello. And let's hear what you've got to say. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, misplaced. Living in this place feels like a mistake. They don't like me because of this face. They don't like her because she's mixed race. I can look a man in the eyes and see his distaste. See, violent eruptions due to higher corruption, enforcing rules followed by instructions. Has the economy on the bridge of malfunction? You see, this system got so many in prison. People of the sun shine high and always glisten. Some people lead laws in and take resources. If you look deep enough, you will see the causes. He couldn't take his breath while he was pausing. It makes me uncomfortable to know there's people applauding. See, bad decisions and bad choices can lead to quiet people making loud noises. See, no matter how I dress or how I talk, how I walk, I still feel misplaced. I don't feel my baby's safe. They're dying in labor, along with a mother. Can't do us no favors. I remember they used to trade us. Now we're in suits being traders. Who do we trust, conservative or labor? There's bloodshed on these streets due to actual paper. They say, don't cry over spilt milk, but tears are shed over spilt oil. In the things we do, it usually takes more than two. So the person who's ruling you has a ruler too. They can change our minds on what to do and how we view. But who am I and who are you? I don't feel safe in this place. I feel misplaced. Thank you. As always, it's really inspiring to hear Tyler speak because he comes from a position of authenticity and truth. And when I first met Tyler, he came on a McKenzie friendship training course that the Ron Todd Foundation was delivering, which was fantastic. And I was really pleased to learn today that he's in his um, first year doing his degree, which is fantastic. Yeah. So big achievements and big up because you're changing the world, Tyler, with one word at a time. You're doing great, man. Well done. Thank you. Now, Tyler's always a hard act to follow, so I'm glad that I'm not doing that. And it's led <laughs> to the lovely Lois. 
Lois is a GRT activist and never have I met a more inspiring young person who changes stereotypes, challenges them and actually brings people together in the process. Last year she won our award for inspiring young person and it's fantastic that she is continuing to inspire everybody who meets her. So Lois, over to you my lovely. Hello everyone. So my name's Lois. Um, I'm a Romani Gypsy activist based in the West Midlands. Um, and when I won the award last year, it was like a really big thing for me as a young person, mainly because a lot of the work I do is grassroots liaising with local communities, liaising with like local authorities, trying to build change and awareness of travellers and Romani people like myself and our place and important history and like you know UK culture and the wider world and often that comes with barely any recognition often recognition is only reserved for massive NGOs that have wealth to fall back on that have you know all of the tools that I didn't grow up with to be recognized to be seen to be appreciated so for me when I found out I won this award and got to come, something I think is really important is this idea of community recognition and creating working class spaces of mutual solidarity. Um, I come from a working class family, a family of scrap dealers, manual labourers and proper union people. And I think it was the most proud I'd ever seen my parents. I actually wore my uh, grandparents um, union pins when I actually gave my talk and speech and I think the reason that they were so proud is it, it was because it was an event they could understand you know they understand working class solidarity identity all these different things because I think sometimes we forget that gypsies and travelers are also working class people you know we're a we're a group in society who are consistently demonized using classism and I think that's what spoke to them is that, you know, my mum's spoken to Bianca when I've been on Zoom before, people approach. Because often when we go to these like award ceremonies and spaces, it often uses language that my own family wouldn't understand. It's not how we talk over dinner. It's not how we talk in our spaces. And when we come in these groups and in these environments where it centres working class people, diverse people, um, it's different and it's much better and so important. And I think especially during these difficult times during COVID, it's more important than ever. You know, young people are working on the clock all the time across the globe trying to create change. Um, during COVID, I launched a project called the Diplo Collective, which provides free cultural items to Romani people around the globe. Um, we've sent about 500 parcels since I think May last year. And the whole point of it was based on some of the things that I'd learned from working with Bianca in the past, which is that we don't have to be comfortable with the bare minimum all the time. We don't have to put with, um, you know, people who project all of their hate onto us because they think that we can't stand up for ourselves or can't occupy space. Um, we very much against this idea of like beggars can't be choosers. To me, I think everyone should have choice. Everyone should be able to access things. And I think that's why it's very important to create mutual aid. Um, and I think this is something that's also important because often I feel like I live a double life. Half of my life I'm on, you know, benefits and can't even get a job at McDonald's. And then in another world, I go to these lovely spaces about my grassroots action. And it's this element of like, you know, barely surviving, but also being enriched with people's knowledge and, you know, the fight for a better society and a more equal society where in which we can all be valued. Um, so I think that what I wanna say is that this space is very important. It goes against this idea of capitalism that you have to constantly be producing labor to be worthy in our society. But our society has been built on the working class people. It's been built on ethnic minorities. It's been built by diverse people that are not in the positions that they should be in. Um, and I think that's what makes it so important. This is one of the only spaces where we can sit and look at each other and say, you know what, mate, I see what you're doing and you're on the graft. And you don't have to be, you don't have to have a university degree. 
you don't have to be formally educated you don't have to have parents who've you know accessed the world of wealth and privilege you can have a space where other people who get your life can see you and appreciate how far we come when we don't come from the same environment so yeah I think this is what this space means it's solidarity but it's also a lot more than that it's a function against the system against the establishment that consistently oppresses us and I think that's what makes it so revolutionary it's a revolutionary act to appreciate without the need for um success that's branded by the establishment means so yeah let's you know oh let's crack on shall we hey there we go there you go Bianca <laughs> That was brilliant as always Lois it's really fantastic to hear your perspective and to know that you're championing the cause of the GRT community so eloquently and so passionately I know that the difference that you've made within your community has been well received um, in fact you went to Hungary so it's not just something that you're doing locally not just something you're doing regionally nationally you're doing it internationally and you're making a difference and what's most inspiring for, for me, and I, I do feel concerned, but I'm now able to say this, but as an older person, I mean, you you young people are bloody marvellous. <laughs> I mean, that's terrible that I'm able to use those words. Do you know I mean, Ron's laughing at me in the corner. I think he may well be the youngest here, but only by the moment. And um, so I know that he's equally as proud of, of you. This is the bit where I just kind of tell you a bit about the foundation because I know some familiar faces and I can see some people who have never seen me before. Um, you're thinking hopefully I'll never see you again, but I'm telling you that life is not that lucky. You'll bump into me when you're least expecting because um, that's how life works. But we set up the Ron Todd Foundation for a reason. Back in 2011, you may or may not remember the bedroom tax. And I was really concerned. I was concerned for two reasons. There was a bloke called Ed Miliband. Some might call him Labour leader, but we'll just call him Ed, because I think that's probably more appropriate. We've got another one like that at the moment with Kia. Let's not call him anything other than that. But so we've got Ed, and he's telling us that he's not going to come and join us in solidarity as we march to protest about the bedroom tax. And the bedroom tax was a real problem because it was a tax that, that attacked ordinary people you had a bedroom you were going to pay more do you mean it was a big big issue so i sat in a cafe with my dad as you do in northampton now i know none of you have been to northampton i can tell because you're still all smiling about the word northampton but we're the place where we've gone bankrupt twice we've lost 10 million pounds on a football pitch that doesn't exist yeah so we know how to manage stuff properly yeah we've got proper good values of Toryism here so we're sitting down in a cafe and we're thinking, what can we do? Now, at that point, I thought, I can't sell people labour. I know, shocking. Yes, yeah, if you can't sell people a labour movement. But I can sell them the trade union movement because we believe in the word brother, sister, comrade, solidarity. I thought, but what can I do? Because granddad was a doer. Yeah. So I had this idea. I thought, you know what? I live next door to my mum and dad. Now, I know you're all jealous at that for, aren't you? You wish you lived next door to your mums and dads. Yeah, I can tell. And my mum in the background here is smiling, the biggest smile, because she's really pleased that <laughs> I live next door to her too. However, we're knocked through. Yeah, it's always been knocked through, but it's best if you think of it as being knocked through. And then what happened was, is that we said, if you fall upon hard times and you're a trade union activist, you can come to our house for free. Now that, Carl, seemed like a really good idea because if I'm honest with you, I didn't think anyone would come. Yeah, I thought, but yeah, good idea. Come to Northampton. We haven't even got a football pitch. Yeah, nothing can happen. Last year, we had 9,000 people come through the door. 9,000 people knocked on our door, which is absolutely, well, shocking for mum and dad because I wasn't here most of the time. I'm doing other stuff. So they're having a terrible time with strangers needing a cup of tea, strangers needing some help and solidarity. So one of the things that we then did is think to ourselves, what does that actually mean? Well, it means two things. That A, the trade union movement has shifted a lot from when Grandad was about. 
because the trade union movement back in Grandad's day understood that every issue is a trade union issue. And I know that we've got comrades here tonight who can understand that. But we know that we've got to reinvent our words. I was at a meeting earlier this evening where people said, oh, no, we don't use the word comrade. We don't use the word brother and sister and solidarity. And they're the words that you're going to find a lot of at the Ron Todd Foundation. Because it doesn't matter where you are in the world, if you fall upon hard times, the Ron Todd Foundation will help you. Because that's what family actually means. So that's why we had 9,000 people. I haven't done a big ad in the Morning Star. There's no adverts about us. All of our advertising has been word of mouth. Which means, Mike, that my mum's dinner is much too good. Yeah, and we need to change that. We've got to reduce the numbers drastically. I'm getting less to eat. I'm going to be skinny and hidden away by next year. So we've got to work on some things to make the whole house different. When I tell people about the house, they think it's quite inspiring. And I, I'm honoured about that. But what I'm worried about is what can people do to do stuff in their own community? So one of the things that we do is we do some training. We like to call it solidarity education. Yeah. And the education that we do is outside of the classroom. So you might meet me in a building, but it's quite clear that I'm going to chuck you out as soon as I can. Yeah, partly because I know that you know the skills already, but you can't change communities from reading a book. So we do a street solidarity, which is around practical campaigning. But this year we've just launched our McKenzie Friendship Training. And on the first McKenzie Friendship course, we had 42 people complete a CPD qualification because we know that 850,000 people are at risk of eviction over the summer. And let's be quite clear that we've got a government who not only failed in the pandemic controls, but is using herd immunity to kill as many of us off as they can but don't actually care about how many of us will lose our homes afterwards. We don't have to sit down and accept. There are some people who think it's as good as they get because after having so many years of a Tory government who think we can have anything better than this. But we know, and I know from the comrades in this group that a better world is possible and we don't have to tolerate such injustice. So we're going to start heading up a campaign where unlike some of our trade union comrades like in Acorn, where you've got to pay to be a member, we're going to let you do the training for as cheap as chips. So if you're unemployed or you're retired, you can do it for free. And if you've got a job, maybe you want to pay a pound, but you definitely won't pay more than five. That's where we think that education should be. It should be affordable for all and it should be accessible for all. And we should be at this moment equipping as many people as possible to do stuff. We don't need loads of people to do it. We need loads of people to be committed to making change. Those of you who may remember my granddad, he was a man who was not concerned about numbers. And we follow that principle here. If you're concerned about numbers, that's all you're going to get. Yeah, what we're concerned about is quality of comrades. And when I look around this screen now, the quality of comrades is absolutely extraordinary. So one of the other things that we do at the Ron Todd Foundation is we like to celebrate, sorry, I've got people trying to phone me. They don't realize it's a Ron Todd lecture. They don't know the importance of it. And I wouldn't mind, but it's actually in my other half. So he should know better really, as if this date isn't in his diary. I can't actually believe it. So one of the other things that we do is celebrating Grandad's legacy by having this lecture and celebrating with ordinary people who have done some extraordinary things. One of the things that we hope that you'll take away from this evening is a passion for collectivism, a belief in collaboration, and knowing that a good idea can only be great if we share it. So the Ron Todd Foundation is going to go above and beyond in sharing the causes that you are all a part of, but we ask that you do the same for us. Now is the time that we big each other up, but we share in all that we're doing and we start, we ignore the gossip and the negative. We don't even give it the time because while we're doing that, ordinary people are dying, ordinary people are struggling and we need to do better. It feels like a good spot to have a pause because now is a time when I get to virtually present some awards. So, let us go. 
and it will involve me actually turning my phone completely off in the hope that then that works. We're joined here tonight by some really fantastic award winners and some of them don't know why they're here, they don't know why they've been awarded them, they don't know why they've been nominated. But let me tell you that we had a really, really good um, amount of people doing the nominations this year. Normally, I'm reaching out to people and saying, do you know anyone? Can you help? But this year, that was not like that at all. I want to start off by Socialism of the Heart. And the two comrades who got this award can't be more different, but more the same in equal measures. I'm going to tell you why we're awarding them and then I'd hope that they will then give some words for themselves and tell us a bit about what they're doing so we can big up what they're doing in their own communities. I'd like to start by brother Andy Gibb who for those of you who don't know is a phenomenal educator, is a passionate trade unionist and everywhere he goes trade unionism is in his words, in his food, in his soul. One of the nominees who described him said, I, when you look at Andy, he just personifies what the trade union movement is. It's not about what he does, it's about how he behaves with you. It's about the fact that he's inclusive and you never feel alone when Andy's about. Nothing could be truer. I met Andy once with a comrade, Pete Martin, and straight away, it was as if we were in the same family. It was amazing. So it gives me great honour to present you, she says, with her award, which I know you've got your own at your end, ta-da, um, with Socialism of the Heart. Can you tell us a bit about yourself, Andy? Yeah, <clears throat> I did a little potted history, which I sent forward to Bianca, because I know how limited an amount you can get into a couple of minutes. So... Um, I've been involved in the CWU and its predecessors for over 40 years now. I've been involved in community activism for about 25, 30 years as well, both in Northern Ireland and Loughborough in England. And uh, I've done a bit in Glasgow as well. And <clears throat> towards the back end of my activism, uh, I was lucky enough to be encouraged by Trish Lavelle, the head of education of the CWU, to go and do a a teaching qualification and then end up in the trade union studies uh, program at Ruskin College and it was the most amazing experience for me to empower young activists in the union that developed me into the person that I now am <clears throat> and I'm not going to go on uh, too long because I know that there's others that uh, will want to say stuff about their activism I've always encouraged activism, um, progressive activism, because there's all sorts of activism that we don't want to uh, see develop. So we are always trying to push against conservative activism, far right activism, um, and even cent center ground activism. What we want is progressive activism. And that's what I try to encourage throughout my life. Um, as a trade unionist and as a community activist. Finish on this note, a strap line that I always used when I was communicating with uh, activists uh, by email generally, uh, used uh, a quote from an educator and philosopher from Brazil called Paulo Freire. And Paulo Freire said, education doesn't change the world. Education changes people. People change the world. Solidarity, comrades. Absolute solidarity to you. It reminds me of a Ron Todd quote, Andy, that says, um, what we need at the moment is not a wishbone, a backbone. Do you mean? And a backbone is made of progressive radical um, politics, class politics, where we understand and have those conversations. Absolutely. Thank you very much, brother. So then we move on to the delightfully awesome Mr. Brother Luke Elgar. And 
what I was really impressed with when I read some of the nominees for Luke was the fact that people described him as just really kind, but he's everywhere. He's on the NEC, you need some help. He's here, there and everywhere and nothing is too much difficulty. I mean, if you need something, you can just literally pick up the phone and Luke will do go out of his way to try his best. And it was really, really lovely to see that so many young members of the CW in particular nominated you, Luke, because they just felt like you inspired them and that because of you, they felt that they could have a journey within the trade union movement and that it wasn't clicky and it wasn't classism and that they too could reach the top. If such a thing is possible in the trade union movement as if there is a top, that's another debate for another time. But Luke, for a young man who inspires everybody, thank you very much. And it's a great honor to present you with your Socialism of the Heart Award. Can you tell us a bit about yourself, Luke? Yeah, yeah. well, I'm, um, I feel more nervous about speaking after this than every, any other speaking I've done before. Um, it's quite a surprise, but after hearing that, I'm, I'm double nervous. Uh, I think I first got into trade unionism, although my dad was a rep, there, you know, all the, like a lot of um, workplaces, the vacancies were filled by people who have been in it a long time. And it wasn't until I, I would guess I'm one of Corbyn's own after his surge in politics in that, I was, um, I, the branch secretary found out that I didn't finish my round, I'm a postman in South End in, in Essex. He, didn't, he found out that I didn't finish my round until about seven at night because I'd snuck off um, to listen to Jeremy Corbyn speaking in a, in the parking hotel in Southend. And he asked why I wasn't um, the young workers officer. So I, I said, what is the young workers officer? And he filled me in and I went for it from there. And um, I think, you know, to hear people say that, you know, that, I'm, that they find I can, they can approach me and um, I'll help Matt. Um, it, it's a really nice thing because um, that was my experience all the way through. It's quite nerve wracking getting involved in trade unions, speaking on like this and, uh, and there are all sorts of things. It can be quite nerve wracking at times and it can be quite tense. You know, there's some big characters, but there was always people helping me. So if, you know, if you get that help, there's no doubt you'll, um, you'll try and offer that to people after you. So I, I'd encourage everyone people on this call just to support new people coming through. Cheers. Absolutely. Thank you very much, Luke. That's really important. I think what you're saying is really important, isn't it? Because what we're looking for is new people. Do you mean if ever the Labour movement at the moment with Keir Starmer and some of the others in charge, what that should be telling us is where are the new people? Where are our new leaders? And how can we find them at the moment? Because actually we need them more than ever. Do you mean working people are dying, working people are living in poverty and the Labour movement isn't providing the answers, but we know that the answers are out there because we know that people like Luke exist. So there's always hope. That's really fantastic news. We just need you now to change from your trade union routes to the MPs, minor, minor point. So next, we are delighted to look at the Award for Social Justice. And this is a really interesting one for us as a, as a charity, as a foundation, because I had the pleasure of going to the CWU conferences, which is always lovely. I'm telling you that's an adventure um, for many different reasons. And the fact that I survive it as a stall holder is, quite remarkable to be honest with you and but I've been more than once I don't know whether that makes me a glutton for punishment or just like I like watching what's happening at CWU but there's another stall who go oh what are you doing Bianca because what you do is very similar to us do you mean you care about people we care about people too so the CWU HA the humanitarian aid is a fantastic charity that the CWU run and organize but it's only fantastic because brother Carl Webb is the president of it, he founded it, and he's made a huge difference. There can't be a more significant um, organization within the trade union movement who's changed the lives of so many. Brother Carl Webb, it is an absolute honor to give you your award for social justice. Congratulations. Yay. Um, if you can unmute yourself and tell us a bit about the fantastic work that you do, Carl. Well, first of all, I just want to say thank you very much for the award. Um, 
I never even won the I never won the egg and spoon race at school. So it's actually uh, at the age of nearly sixty, I've actually won something. I am so chuffed with this, and I'll explain I'll explain why. Um, obviously, Ron was the uh, TNG general secretary. Uh, my dad was a shop steward for the TNG. Uh, God bless him. Uh, he he was the one that sort of got me to stand as a trade union official. Uh, mainly because in 1975 I was watching Thatcher get elected. I was uh, 18 then. I was well, kicking off. Um, my dad said, well, get off your backside and do something about it. So I became a union rep in 1980. And I've been a rep uh, ever since. And I'm proud to say I've been the regional secretary, uh, if, if you don't mind me saying this to everybody else, the best region in the country, the Northwest. Uh, since 1993. But what the reason why I've been given this award, and as I said, I'm really, really honoured, is because I helped set up CW Humanitarian Aid, uh, which is a registered charity. Um, we set that up in 1995. And why it's very significant is because Billy Hayes, who was our General Secretary, former General Secretary, said to me once, and Alex, who's on this call, um, he said to uh, both of us that CJHA was the first real organized, first thing that really came together when we merged from the UCW to the NCU. And any union that merges, and I think the Knights will know all about this and other unions, it does take a few years to uh, sort of bring, bring both unions together. Uh, but CWHA did that straight away because all the people that got involved with CWHA, there was telecom engineers, there was posties, there was uh, people who worked in the contact centres. So it was everybody. But the beauty of it, it actually wasn't headquarters. It was actually members and the branches. So it was actually, in a way, it was driven from the lay members. And... What we did, we heard about a solidarity convoy that was going to Bosnia, a city called Tuzla, in 1995. Some of you know that the, the Bosnian war and many people were being put into uh, prisons and there was ethnic people were being killed just because of their religion. And we wanted to go over and show solidarity to these trade unions, Postal and Telecom trade unions over in Tuzla. Nearly 200 people, 200 telecom engineers, post men, post women volunteered to go into a war zone. Uh, I, I, I mean, Alex will tell you, that's Percy's on the gods, they helped me set up everything up. They, we were, we were gobsmacked. I couldn't believe it, uh, that people wanted to go over there to show solidarity. Anyway. Every step was it. Now we've done 40 odd humanitarian aid convoys. We work with Royal Mail, BT, on Post Air. We've uh, worked with the GMB. We've worked with other unions as well who've supported us. Uh, we've built a school in Africa, uh, in Tanzania. Uh, we've built a foster adoption centre in Moldova. We've built a street centre in Moldova. We've just helped build a disability. Uh, center institute, well, disability center in a place called Balti in Moldova. There's only two of its kind. You imagine these countries. There's no social services. There's no welfare state. There's no help at all for these children and families. And what we try to do as trade unionists, we don't go over and preach. We don't do anything. We just go over to deliver a smile. We just go over to give some help and do the best we can. And I am so proud to get this award, but I'm, it's, and I know it's a cliche, but the award I'm accepting on behalf of everybody who's ever been involved in CWHA, whether they've been on a convoy, whether they've donated knitting, where they've donated money, where they've gone and collected aid for us. We've, we've been helped by so many wonderful people. And just to say, I'm finished on this, we have been doing a lot of work in the UK. We've been helping a lot of like domestic abuse centres, a lot of the children that leave, that flee flam families, uh, their parents and mother maybe have been abused. They just leave everything. They don't take anything with them and they end up in a hostel. And how, how, how awful is that? So what we're doing, we're working with quite a few centres to help children uh, who, who are in that situation. 
So I'll just again, just want to thank everybody for this award. I'm sorry I've gone on a bit too much, but it's such a big subject. Uh, but thank you very much. Woo! You can hear my mum doing her woo wooing in the background, Carl, for you. So she's putting her thumbs up. And um, well, thank you, mum. That's okay. <laughs> And it, it's, it is really important. And the work that you do there, we echo at the foundation. So for example, over the Christmas period, we gave out over 600 hampers of food and parcels to people who had no food and money um, over the Christmas time. But we don't give vouchers to people because we know that real money is what you need. I mean, we trust people to make good decisions about their lives. There's nothing, in, there's nothing so insulting, I think, from getting a voucher so you can only shop somewhere. We know that people make good decisions when they need to. So we will continue to do that and continue to support the work that you do because it's inspirational. You would be wrong in thinking that everyone here is a trade unionist. I know, shocking Fiona, I can see your face as if that's possible. But we have some people here who are going, bloody hell, this trade union language is really weird. What's going on? And that's because Every now and then we get nominations because some extraordinary things have happened. Who would have thought that during the pandemic, we would have had some of the protests for the Black Lives Matter issue as big and as powerful as we have. We can only hope that those protests are the beginning of real, real systematic change. It pains me as a white person, but we're still asking black people to make the change when we quite frankly know that it's our job as white people to change society. Please know that that's part of the work that the Ron Todd Foundation does. We are really, really passionate about this issue. And it begins because for those of you who don't know, Ron Todd was an instrumental person in changing the language in the trade union movement around Nelson Mandela. Even on the left, we called him a terrorist. And it was my granddad, along with some of the others on the TUC, who created a motion. And we spoke about how we can support Nelson Mandela in the fight for freedom, the fight for equality. That fight has not ended. It continues today. And the Ron Todd Foundation is so, so proud of being able to showcase some really fantastic comrades, even though you don't describe yourselves as such you still are, um, in their work. And that begins then with the next award. And we start with sister Maya Thomas. And this award is for equality. So I shall show you it now and hand you it across. I know that you've got yours there, hopefully to pretend to pick up. Perfect. And I, I guess the reason why you were nominated by an, an extraordinary amount of people, Maya, is because not only were you instrumental in doing some stuff around Black Lives Matter, which um, was in schools, in communities and raising awareness, but you did something more than that. You went, okay, my community needs something. What is the need? They're hungry. And so now you're delivering this phenomenal program, feeding people all across your community. I can't tell you how proud we are of your achievements and how inspiring you are to all of those who have met you. But there are people here who may not know who you are. So this is your chance, Maya, to tell us a bit more about the work that you're doing. And I just want to say thank you very much for making sure that black women are not seen as being that aggressive, um, anti-establishment thing. You and Bianca here today are really showcasing the fact, challenging stereotypes and proving so many people wrong. We're really, really proud. Thank you. So I'm Maya, I'm 21. So I really became an activist when I moved to Devon from London. I moved when I was about 10 years old and that's when I really noticed that my skin color was going to affect my journey in life. Education has always been really important to me, but my education did suffer because of my skin color. In school, I had food thrown at me by children saying, feed the African, feed the slave. I was treated differently than other pupils. I didn't get as much attention from teachers. I saw members of my family also being treated differently in school and outside of school. I've been followed around shops and I've been called aggressive, overly confident for my whole life. Education is what empowers you and it is what builds you up as a person. And although all these horrible things happened in schools, that is who made, what made me who I am today. 
So I took this and I organized the Black Lives Matter protest in Exeter, where over 1,500 people attended, but I wanted to make it educational so that people could speak about their experiences and educate people down in Devon for them to know what is wrong with the way that we have been treated and to let them know our true life experiences. Since that protest, I'm now working with over 70 schools across the Southwest and beyond on equality, diversity and inclusion. I'm a mentor for many head teachers and a person that young people can look up to, but also have their voice heard through me, which is an amazing opportunity. Equality has always been so important to me because I have suffered and I've seen so many people like me suffer, not just because of race, but just for being different, whether that's mental health issues or they've got disabilities. I've seen so many suffer. So I've always wanted to use my platform to make a difference. It's hard when you spend your life speaking about your lived experiences, but people want to deny that. They want to take that away from you. They tell you that it's not true or they blame you for these experiences be heard that is incredible then on top of that I recently founded Feed Our Community at the beginning of January which was a project aimed to reduce food poverty in my local community as I've always been focused on equality I wanted to ensure that the project reached a wide group of areas and different communities within the whole wide community so I wanted to focus on not just the BAME community but also people with disabilities mental health that may affect them from getting to food banks or from getting the help that they need I wanted to focus on young people who may not know the systems and who have also been let down by government as much as other people in the world so since the beginning of the project around six weeks ago I've delivered to over 2700 households they've received free food packages they also have access to zoom meetings like this but they get mentorship on household and financial budgeting as well the project has really taken off and being a center figure in my community now I really just want to do as much as I can in all areas to help Activism is so important to me and it's how I found my voice and it's how I've allowed others to find their voice and realize that you can speak up and you will be heard. So receiving awards like this is just motivation. It makes people see that it is worth it and that despite suffering all this pain, it's still important to continue speaking out and don't let anyone else take those experiences away from you. So thank you. Hey. My, my mum's wooing is going to get louder as we go on, so you can't see, but we're proper celebrating behind. Yeah, so we're proper doing that. I think that one of the things that I can take from your story, Maya, is that I'm unemployable. Those people who know me will understand that better, but we're never taught as young people that you don't have to be employable. You can work for yourselves and you can change your own communities. One of the best things about being unemployable is that when I'm naughty, I don't have to wor worry about getting Luke in as my trade union rep because I can just sit on the naughty step, have a cup of tea, and then I'm back at work again. Do you know what I mean? And, and quite frankly, I'm on the naughty step quite often and tea is my favourite tipple, but after dark, who knows what. Tyler's like, Bianca, I might be self-employed too. I'll help you, Tyler. Don't worry about it. We can change the world one social enterprise at a time. But you've done some really fantastic work there, Maya, and anything that the Ron Todd Foundation can do to help you, then we'll, we'll link up after this and, and definitely we'll, we'll do some stuff together. That'd be fantastic. When talking about equality, then there are some people, when you say the word equality, their name just pops into your head. So it is no surprise. In fact, I'm surprised it's taken this long, but Mike Jackson is on the stage because quite frankly, he has been an instrumentally inspiring person within the LGBTQ plus community. But more than that, he's been an inspiring person for every one of us who fight for equality, regardless of what section of that fight we are in. He is a man who is kind, who is caring, who is passionate, whose talks are um, uplifting. He is one of the nicest people and it, he came to one Ron Todd lecture to meet Walter Wolfgang and that didn't surprise me because Walter is a stalwart human and we miss him very much and absolutely Mike Jackson you are made of the same stern stuff you are made of some special magic that only comes around once in a lifetime it gives me the absolutely 
biggest honour to be able to present you da, 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 <laughs> with the Equality Award for everything that you do. <laughs> Can you tell us a bit about yourself, Mike? Well, <laughs> thank you for that. Um, a bit embarrassed now. Um, it's a real honour to get this award, uh, especially an award that's in the memory of a real working class hero like Ron Todd. Um, and also to be alongside these other people. Mia's story there was just fantastic. And for a 21 year old, that's amazing, Mia. Well done, you. <laughs> uh, so thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Um, so, I mean, my claim to fame, as you know, is, is, is uh, being Secretary of Lesbians and Gay Support of the Miners back in uh, the 1980s during the miners' strike. Um, we organise, as I'm sure most people here have, have, have seen the movie Pride, which is a movie, it's not a documentary, it's not all uh, completely true. There's a lot of kind of fictional stuff going on in there as well as a real representation. Um, but I honestly thought that, you know, when I went to my deathbed, we'd be forgotten about. And uh, it's just been amazing, uh, this film, how it's actually projected us in, into the limelight. And I, and I take this award on behalf of the of the other comrades in LGSM, and we don't we're not frightened of using words like comrade and socialist and class. <laughs> uh, I, I won't put up with that Orwellian kind of thing. That oh, we've moved on from there, have we? Hell. <laughs> um, so what I've done in, since the movie came out six years ago is is just put myself out there. Uh, mainly for, for, for the trade union and labour movement. And I've spoken at hundreds and hundreds of, uh, of meetings and just really kind of gone around the world, kind of doing a clarion call for the labour and trade union movement. And, and frankly, at the moment, after uh, the disaster in, in December 2019 and the disaster that we've got leading the Labour Party at the moment, the need for the trade union movement is even greater than ever. Um, the trade unions will never really swerve from their course, uh, whereas the Labour Party has always swerved from its course. Um, it's always had this liberal right wing uh, reformist uh, element in it. Um, so, yeah, um, in my job, um, I've worked in horticulture all my life. Uh, and I spent 16 years in one job teaching horticulture from people from disadvantaged backgrounds. Uh, and I made a lot of uh, progress working with ex-offenders. Uh, but I'm 66. I retired a year ago and uh, I'm really enjoying it and loving going around, car carrying on speaking. So I I'm, I'm your renter mob, a a an official prostitute to the trade union movements. <laughs> We all need our own prostitute for the trade union movement. I'm glad you put yourself forward for that, Mike. And <laughs> you'll get bookings accordingly. But well done. Thank you. Stuff. It's real, really lovely to have you here. And I'm, I'm sure that our paths will continue to cross as you continue to, um, to make history and to change the future. I know lots of young people who have felt comfortable coming out, who have felt comfortable about chatting about their, their own journey because of you and because of the stance that you took. So solidarity always. We now are moving on to the last kind of 20 minutes. It would not be a trade union -y type event, a Ron Todd event if we finished at eight o'clock on time. And I know that that's a shocker because we're not gonna finish on time, but we won't be too far over. We'll still be in time for you to catch up with the EastEnders on your bus or something if you need to. But there are some other people that we need to give a big shout out to and to thank. And we begin that with inspiring young people. We heard earlier from Lois who explained how challenging it is as a young person and how important it is to have your authentic voice heard. And so when we got some of the nominations for inspiring young people, there were two people and we just felt that actually we had to, we had to give both of them award, an award because they were both doing some extraordinary stuff. Fiona Curtis, Sister Fiona Curtis, who again is a CW member. I'm not sure what happened to the CW nominations. They probably got their finger out of their pocket this year and did their writing. I need to chat to other trade unionists on the TUC and get them to make more effort. 
not that you're not great, Fiona, but I feel like I'm surrounded by too many CWs. It feels a bit purple in the room. However, people describe you, Fiona, as inspirational. They describe you as being passionate, committed, as being somebody who could be a next general secretary, as someone who understands, as somebody who is inclusive, as somebody who makes a difference. It was the quality of the words that you use. You don't patronize, you include. You take time and you care. And for those reasons, it's a great, great honor to be able to award you. This is obviously not the same award. I'm doing different awards each time, but inspiring young person. Fiona, thank you very much for everything you do for the movement. I was wondering if you could just tell us a bit about yourself. Yeah, oh, thank you so much. <laughs> hey, I just want to say thank you to everybody and thanks to for everybody who nominated me as well. Um, it's just, I don't know, it feels so humble, especially everyone who's been on here tonight. Um, I suppose, well, I'm 27. Um, I got involved in the union because there's a local union rep that kept asking me would I be involved. And um, she turned around and said, um, if you don't like it, you can stop. So I said, right, okay, I'll give it a chance. <laughs> and uh, well, I'm still here today. So, <laughs> um, but that's how I got started. And I suppose, well, I'm the chair, I suppose, of the National Young Workers Committee for the CWU. And I'm also part of the national negotiating team for open reach within the CWU as well. Um, I went on, I got the young workers seat for it, and then I've become a full member of it. So um, I think, well, the trade union movement itself, it, it's given me more than I could ever imagine. Um, whenever I first got involved, um, it's I think it's so important even now more than ever to be involved in the trade union. Um, there's, so, there's so many, I suppose, injustices in the world. Um, people need to feel as though they have the voice and they have a choice. I know people were talking here earlier about having that choice and um, being able to have the confidence as well, to be able to challenge things, things that don't seem right. There's things that you don't feel are... Um, things that maybe shouldn't be happening, uh, especially in the workplaces and politically as well. Um, I know that I've been extremely lucky in who I've met along my trade union journey. That's probably why I'm still here today because there's been some really um, inspirational people that have helped to shape my path. Um, I suppose and there's even some of them here on, on the call here today. And even the people that are around me at the minute, the ones that are there to help and support. Um, I know that even being a trade unionist, it makes you I know that I'm quite quite strong-willed and quite um, be quite focal, but sometimes it's trying to take that step back and actually listen to what people are trying to, what people are looking for and what people are actually needing. Um, trying to actually listen, I suppose, and for people to actually have that voice. Um, I try to be, um, try to take all that on board and try to, I suppose, when we're trying to organise events, especially in the CWU, is trying to have that balance because not everybody is industrial minded, not everybody's political minded or, but it's trying to, I suppose, educate people and try to get, if you are, try to get that spark into the young people, because especially a lot of young people don't realise what a trade union can do. Because I know that I didn't realise what a trade union can do. I know that in the workplace that I should have went to a trade union a long time ago, but just, just the wee small things you don't even realise, but it's all the wee small things that all add up. Um, and it's also about the trade union, the massive things that we can achieve and the massive th things we can achieve by collectivism and about standing together. And um, I think that even for a lot of the things that, um, for things, I think a lot, for a lot of things to progress within either in the workplace or in society, it's about the collectivism, everybody standing together and about us being stronger whenever we do stand together. But it's about enabling people to actually have that voice and have that like, courage to be able to stand up and be able to speak up for the injustices and speak up for what they believe in and um but having that I suppose that momentum and that like a bit of a push give them that encouragement and stuff and trying to get them involved and um try to I suppose create groups and stuff too of like-minded people that they can they have that even that bond and that where they can talk I suppose and it's a bit more difficult now with COVID, but trying to even with the WhatsApp groups and with social media and different things, different platforms that you can use, it's about using using the things that you have and using it, what's available to you. Um, I suppose that I suppose I don't want to, don't want to ramble on too much more, but I suppose especially um, especially in today's society, I suppose just it's about stand together and that that's saying about stand together and uh, fight together and win together. That's just something that I truly really believe in, and it's, it's so humbling to actually get this award tonight. And thank you so much, everybody. Thank you very much, Fiona. I've met you a few times, Fiona, and I have to say that every word that I read about you, I found to be personally true. You are an inspiration to the movement, and I've no doubt that we will continue to hear your story as the years go on. 
Now, now we move on to a young person who is not known as a comrade, but I will refer to her as, and we both know that it's very peculiar when you meet people of the same name. But it feels to be very apt tonight that we meet Bianca because today we remember Sarah who died. Yeah, the young person who was walking home and she didn't make it. And there are sometimes that people come into your life who are beyond inspirational. And Bianca Ali is a young person who is beyond inspirational. She has challenged adversity at all points of her life. She has led Black Lives Matter. She is now doing her own podcast, the amazing stuff on social media. But she inspires people because she shares her lived experience with passion, humility, and a sense of understanding that is unique and fabulous. I am honored to be able to offer you, Bianca, the inspiring young person. And I want to just tell you that having seen some of your posts of social media over the last year, you're here today and you should be very proud. Woo. Your mom looks very proud. My mum's whooping in the Woo. background. Yeah, so <laughs> she's you, very man. proud of you. But sometimes when you survive and you make a difference, you don't know how many people you've made a difference to. You haven't just done that for yourself. You've done it for every person who stands behind you and is following your lead. Well done, Bianca. Um, yeah, uh, sorry. Just made me a little bit of emotional there. Um, thank you so much. First of all, of course, to the Rod Ron Todd Foundation, I'd like to say thank you and to every single individual and organization that nominated me. Um, I'm hugely appreciative. Um, this is something that was, you know, just really random. Um, I had a message off you saying that I was nominated and that um, would I accept the award. So for me, it was like really overwhelming but at the same time like you know I'm just I'm just so grateful um for you know those that don't know about a year and a half ago I went through a really bad domestic violent relationship um I had to flee from there and since I've created my own organization called the take back um is dedicated to um, fundraising for local charities, but is also dedicated to women that have been through domestic violence. I like to call us survivors, rather than survivors, I like to call us, call us warriors. We are warriors of domestic violence. We've come from the other side, we've fought, and we've, you know, we're still standing strong. I've created a few programs within the Take Back um, to help women and survivors and warriors um, of domestic violence. And it's, um, it's been an incredible journey. Um, I've held numerous amount of events over the last couple of years um, with, with the warriors of domestic violence. And just to see, you know, the way that, you know, just one small thing can change somebody's life is incredible. Um, everything that I do, I do for the ripple effect. I've always said that. Um, you know, so even if it's just a small chat, even if it's just a, a referral to a service, anything, anything that I can do to change somebody's life for the better, I will do. Um, it was last June that I started to get involved with the Black Lives Matter movement here in Cardiff. Um, I think it was the second um, protest, which was the biggest in Cardiff. We had about 4,000 people, which I was kind of named as a main organiser. And from there, you know, I've just been fighting and continuing to fight for justice, for all the injustices and the racial um, discriminations that have happened here in not just Cardiff, but South Wales. It's been an incredible journey. Um, I've met some amazing people along the way. I've learned, I've grown, I've refound myself and to know that I've inspired people along the way brings me um, a huge amount of pride. Um, this is this is an award that I could never have, you know, thought that was possible for myself, but I am so proud to be here today and to accept this amazing award from the, uh, from the Ron Todd um, Foundation and from, from Bianca yourself, 
like like you said it's crazy to say the same name <laughs> but yeah I am so so proud and I am so grateful and I'm so thankful and so appreciative and I really do urge anybody here you know if you know anybody that's gone through domestic violence that needs any type of um support please do um push them forward uh, my my social media page is the take back on Facebook um, I can put it in the chat here for people to follow. Please, please do. And the same with, um, you know, with Black Lives Matter, any um, injustices, please come to us. We can help. It doesn't, you don't have to necessarily be based in Cardiff. We, 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 we can help. We can forward you to people that, you know, that can support you. And, and yeah, um, I'm just once again overwhelmed and hugely hugely grateful so thank you to everyone that nominated me and thank you to the Ron Todd Foundation and thank you to you Bianca. You're very welcome well done Bianca. I think it's really important to remember an injustice to one is an injustice to everybody and we, we're really passionate about that and you're quite right you are a warrior as are, are all people who have survived whatever trauma they have in their life. I think the other issue that is really important to raise is that in memory of Sarah, this weekend, all across the country, there are vigils um, in her name. So we know that we'll be having one in Northampton. There may not be many of us, but I'm going to be out at 6.30, and I know that they're happening around 6.30 all around the country. Now is a time that we must reclaim our streets, we must make them safe, and we definitely cannot tolerate the police acting in such a violent way, especially towards women. So please, if you do have nothing to do on a Saturday and in these COVID times, I believe you are all free. This is a guess of mine and that you are looking for a reason to escape your house. But when you do escape your house, remember this, Maya, and I know that you'll know the best, Carl, you need to keep a cow away from somebody and not a chicken. Yeah, so when I'm telling people how far they need to keep away from each other, you're looking for a whole cow, not a chicken. If you're a lamb away from somebody, you are too close. So even though we're out protesting, let's keep ourselves safe with our face masks, socially distancing. But we need to make sure that these protests are as big as the BLM because they are all linked. An injustice against one is an injustice against all. And the injustice for us at the Ron Todd Foundation is a working class issue, but we can have that class politics discussion on another evening. We can only be very happy that our last award is to one of the most amazing women I have ever known in my life. Now, I am very lucky to have a granddad who was what I like to think, one of the good trade union leaders. He was able to be a Lord three times. He turned it down because he had his principles. But with those principles, he was a big believer in the campaign for nuclear disarmament. And he was a vice president of the organization because he knew that it makes sense not to have nuclear weapons. I cannot believe that at this time in my life, we have a Labour Party who are still supporting nuclear weapons. It's an absolute disgrace. So it feels very important that we have the Award for Peace. And this Award for Peace has had some phenomenal previous winners. Bruce Kent, if you don't know who he is, my goodness, you need to go Google him. Walter Wolfgang, if you didn't know who he was, you definitely need to go and Google him. But then you've got Kate Hudson. Now, if you don't know who Kate Hudson is, you're going to find out now. No need to Google because this remarkably kind, inspiring, she is family to me and our family here at Ron Todd Foundation. So it's really good news when somebody takes your hints, which you've been dropping for the last 10 years. Oh, wouldn't Kate be good for this award? Finally, I've had people from across the movement nominate her and it gives me the biggest, biggest honor, Kate, to be able to present you with the Ron Todd Award for Peace. Never has somebody wanted it more. Oh, thanks very much indeed, Bianca. And it is really an honour for me to accept this award and I will accept it on behalf of CND and on behalf of CND I want to thank you Bianca for the work that you do. You've been honouring us here tonight and I would like to really honour you for the work that you've done over the last decade 
with the foundation. It's been amazing. And you've talked about other people being kind and your kindness is phenomenal too. The number of times I've been so grateful to turn to you during the pandemic, we've had Zoom cups of tea. I've had a bit of a moan about people and all that sort of thing, um, you know, and all the anxieties one's had during the past year and you've been there, you've been like a rock to me. So I thank you for that. Um, and <laughs> it must run in your family, Bianca, um, because I want to pay tribute also to Ron, your granddad. I mean, you've talked about him, other people have talked about him, but he just managed within his own person to marry together the two values of the labor movement, you know, that are so fundamental is the, the working class solidarity and taking the class forward. And then also the cause of peace and the cause of nuclear disarmament, which I always believe are absolutely central to the trade union movement. You know, because at the end of the day, if we go to war, who goes to war? It's the, the young mm. men and now the young women, the working class young men and women who are going out there to be killed, you know. So that is that is absolutely central to the trade union movement. And really for me, Ron's commitment, it was a lifelong commitment. Um, I was just looking up a bit about um, his work, you know, over his really active political leadership period. And I noticed that in 1958, when CND was founded, he was on that demonstration with your father, his young son, Peter. You know, so that was really there right from the start, from the founding of CND, uh, was it 63 years ago? You know, your family was there, your granddad, your dad, they were there on that demonstration. And um, he really brought that through in his trade union work as well. It wasn't just a personal thing he felt and you know went out and did personally. He ensured that his union, the T and G, also he continued in the footsteps of Frank Cousins, who was a, the previous a previous general secretary, very strong for CND and nuclear disarmament. Your granddad, he really carried that forward in the trade union. And he was an example to the rest of the trade union movement. And I can say that with CWU comrades on the call as well. CWU is also equally staunch in the cause of peace and nuclear disarmament in the same way that Ron was. And you touched on it yourself, Bianca, you mentioned the Labour Party um, and how um, dispiriting, if I could just use a word like that, it is that the Labour leadership has just recently said support for Trident, that's nuclear weapons, Britain's nuclear weapons system, is non-negotiable. I mean, that is just su such a terrible thing. And I think that Ron would be absolutely disgusted at that position. It was certainly he fought, you know, in the Labour Party, in the Labour movement for the good anti-nuclear position. And I think he'd be sorry that the successor to his own union, um, you know, that following the subsequent merger of the TNG and others, he would be sorry to see that they don't have that strong, really strong stand for nuclear disarmament that the TNG had under him and his predecessors. So, I mean, just if I can look at this award, it says looking back to fight forward. And that's what I think is so inspirational mm -hmm. about your foundation, Bianca, and, and all the work that you do. You know, we look back to the example of people like Ron Todd, great leaders like Ron, and all the people he worked with and the grassroots that he brought up and forward, you know, and that's an inspiration to us as we continue to work. So thank you very much. Thanks to all of you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kate. I guess this brings us to the end and I want to leave you with some Ron Todd thoughts because that's what my granddad would have done. I reminded you at the beginning, but what we need never at the moment is we need people with backbones and not wishbones. And what that means is don't worry if people don't like you. Don't worry if people don't share your politics. Don't worry about that at all. The world wasn't changed by people all agreeing. I'm sure if it was, then the World Health Foundation would not be existing. So, be brave, be bold, and have a backbone rather than a wishbone, because if enough of us do, then maybe we can make change. My other Ron Todd quote, which I think is really appropriate for the moment, is that you don't have office 
You don't have power if you don't have your principles, you have office. We don't want office, we want power. And in order to have power, we have to have our principles. Our principles as socialists, our principles as trade unionists, our principles as warriors, as activists are so very, very important. Don't give up your principles, they're not worth it. We are led at the moment by a Labour government who if they were to get in office, that is all they would have and we would have no social change. It doesn't have to be like this. A better world is possible. This is not as good as it gets. Um, it can get better. And I know it can get better because I'm surrounded by comrades tonight who have made the people, their community, a better place. Thank you everybody for your time tonight. I know even in COVID times when we're locked up in our rooms, time is still precious. What you do is important and it's valued. You are important. So please stay very, very safe. Don't let the government get you down. Don't let the Labour opposition get you down. I remember there's light at the end of the tunnel. And if there's ever anything that the foundation can do to help you, then our practical solidarity is only an email, a text, a WhatsApp away. Have a really nice evening. I again raise a glass because my mum hasn't drank it all. <laughs> and I wish you all solidarity. Until the next time, brothers and sisters, may we meet again. Hey! Take care. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Bianca. Thank you.